It really is amazing that some people are so desperate and so desirous for people to be able to lose their salvation. And because there are no examples of anyone actually having salvation in the Bible and losing it, that people will even turn to someone who is called by Jesus a devil who was prophesied to betray him. They would say that that person was indeed saved and then lost his salvation. Obviously, I'm speaking of none other than Judas. And there were those that would go on to say that Jesus, you would have to conclude that Jesus was wrong, that there is a contradiction in the Bible, because that's the only way that you can say that Jesus has chosen him, but then he also lost him. Or that Jesus says that I will lose none, but then he lost the one. So let's go ahead and look at the scriptures and let's find out for a fact that Judas was never saved. Jesus, Judas was never a Christian. Judas never had the spirit. The Bible never says he does. As a matter of fact, the Bible even says the opposite. So let's go to some of the relevant passages. Let's go to John chapter 6. Let's start there. So in verse 37 of chapter 6, Jesus says, All the Father gives me will come to me, and no one will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I'm sorry, will certainly not, I will certainly not cast out. Now, some will say, yes, he won't cast you out, but you can cast yourself out. You can leave. But the problem is, Jeremiah 32 verses 39 and 40 says that when he puts his spirit in them, that they will never turn away from him, nor will he turn away from them. So it could not be that a person can have the spirit of God and then turn away from God or God will ever turn away from them. That would be, my friends, an example of a contradiction. And so he says, I will not cast them out. And so you couldn't come back and say, yes, he won't cast them out. But you can cast yourself out. You can leave yourself. And that's what Judas did. That is not what happened with Judas. Continuing. He says, for I've come down from heaven to do my, not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And here it is. Jesus says, this is the will of my father, of him who sent me. That of all that he has given me, that all that he has given me. And notice this is perfect tense, which is a completed action in the past. So he has given all of those that he's given. Whoever it is that he has given all of them, they have been given in the past. And notice what he says. He says, I will lose none. Now, not only did he say that they will come to me, he says, I will lose none, but raise them on the last day. So if Judas is one of the all that was given, then Judas would have to be one that would not be lost. Judas would have to be one that would be raised on the last day. However, that's not the case for Judas. Judas is not saved. Judas was never one of those. But wait a second. Didn't Jesus choose Judas? Well, he says so. The question is chosen for what? In John, in that same chapter, chapter six, let's go to verse 70. He says, no, you know, let's go to verse, let's go to 69. He says, we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, speaking to the 12. He says, did I not myself not choose you? the 12, and yet one of you is a devil. Now he meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he was one of the 12 who was going to betray him. Did Jesus know this? Of course he did. Jesus is God. This is not something new. Jesus calls him, calls him a devil, yet one of you is a devil. This is before the, the betrayal started. Jesus knew of it. And he says, I chose you. The question is chosen for what? Well, before we get there, because it's going to come up again in Acts 1 when they're choosing a replacement for Judas. And they said they're doing this to sort of fulfill the Psalms. Well, what in the Psalms needs to be fulfilled? What is the Old Testament prophecies that need to be fulfilled? Well, let's go to a couple of Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 41, 9. Even my close friend whom I have trusted, who ate my bread, look what it says, has lifted up his heel against me. Well, this same passage comes up again. We'll see it in John chapter 13 where this is also applied to or ascribed to uh, to Judas. Also in Psalm 109, notice what it says here. Appoint a wicked man over him, and let him, let an accuser stand at his right hand. Uh, well, who was that? Well, that's going to be Judas. Uh, when he is judged, let him come forth guilty and let his prayer come, become sin. Let his days be few. And he says, let another take his office. Well, where do we find that? At? Where is this? Where is this found at? This is found in Acts 1, verse 20. Before we go to 20, let's start off in verse. Let's start in verse 16. This is Peter speaking. He says, Brethren, the scriptures had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit foretold by the mouth of David concerning Judas. Where is that? In the Psalms that we just read. And there are other part passages in the Old Testament also that speak of Judas. But uh, by the mouth of David concerning Judas, 
who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. Again, what did Psalm say about someone that will betray him at his right hand? Uh, we'll deal with this even more so about his heel being lifted up. But notice what also what he says, uh, for he was counted among us and received his share in the ministry. Now, this man acquired a field with the price of his wickedness and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all of his intestines gushed out. And it became known to all who were living in Jerusalem so that in their own language, that field was called Habdachimah, that is the field of the blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, which we just read, let his homestead be made desolate and let no one dwell in it and let another take his office. So the Bible has spoken of Judas in the old. And so obviously Jesus knows exactly about this prophecy. Jesus is, is not clueless. Jesus knows who Judas is. Jesus knows that he was chosen for this. So the question is, what was he chosen for? For this. He is going to fulfill the prophecy. He is going to fulfill what is stated of in the old about someone who is named among them, who is called a friend, who is going to betray him. And even for the named amount, 30 pieces of silver and a field will be purchased from the money because of his betrayal. And the Bible says that there will be another that will take his place. Now, let's go back to Jesus. And Jesus is going to say a few things that is very, very interesting. Now, remember, what we can say is Judas never had the spirit. He never had the spirit breathed upon him, never had the spirit in him, not once. How do we know? So, well, let's go to John 13. Jesus is speaking. Jesus is getting ready to wash their feet. And let's start in verse, let's start in verse 8. Peter always being Peter says, never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. So what does Jesus say? If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Peter said, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Here's Jesus' response. He said to him, he who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but he is, but is completely clean and you are all clean but not all of you. Now, look at the words that's used here. He who is bathed, this word right here, is from the Greek word luo, which is to be cleansed. And this word is, notice it's in the perfect tense. He says, la menos, which means that he has been cleansed in the past. It's the perfect tense. Don't miss this. He says that all of you have been, or whoever has been cleansed in the past, it's perfect tense, only needs to wash his feet, but is completely Halas completely, totally clean, and you are clean. So Jesus, Jesus claims and says that all of you are clean. All of them? Is he saying all of them are clean? No, because he even tells us that not all of you are clean. He says, but not all of you. Well, who's the one? Who could it be? Who's the one person that Jesus is referencing that he says not all of you are? He says, for he knew the one who was betraying him. So obviously Jesus knows about Judas's intended portrayal. It's spoken of, I clearly in the Old Testament, it's prophesied, Jesus knows this, for he knows or knew of the one who was betraying him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. Not all of you are clean. So who's not clean? All of the disciples, except for one person, Judas. So what was Judas never, never cleansed? He was never cleansed according to this passage by Jesus. So you couldn't come back and say that then Judas was saved, but then lost his salvation. Go to John 17, 12. Jesus makes a statement. He says, while I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me. And I guarded them and not one of them perished, but the son of perdition so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. The scriptures must be fulfilled. And so this person was chosen for that reason. Now I've kept all of them not the one who I was not supposed to keep, not the son of perdition. He was never intended to be kept. As a matter of fact, Jesus, Jesus just mentioned that he had even washed him. He had not been cleansed. So, so when people hear this part, except the son of perdition, as though that Jesus tried to keep all of them, but one got away. No, because if he did lose the son of perdition, if the son of perdition was one that was saved, if Judas was saved and he was chosen by God, and when Jesus says that, I will not lose one of them, but then he loses one of them, just one, then we have a contradiction. We also have Jesus clearly being wrong. That is not the case. And so if we go to John 18, verse 9, this is when his betrayal comes about. He says, to fulfill the words which he spoke of those 
whom you have given me, I lost not one. Jesus said, now this is as he's being betrayed. Judas is on the other side. Jesus is saying this, knowing that Judas is betraying him. And what does Jesus say? Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. So he's clearly making a distinction between Judas and the other disciples. How, how wrong would it be for him to say, I lost not one, yet the one that he lost is literally there betraying him? Clearly, Jesus knows that he has not lost one. Judas was, not, was never one that was found, one that was never saved. He was never cleansed. He was never part. As a matter of fact, what does the Bible speak about Jesus, about, about someone like Judas? The Bible calls someone like that an antichrist. He says, children, in 1 John 2, 18, he says, it is the last hour. And just as you have heard that antichrist is coming, even now, many antichrists have appeared from this, we know that it is the last hour. Now, if someone were to say or to submit that Judas was never an Antichrist, nope, that's not what Antichrist is. He's not an Antichrist, not the Antichrist, but an Antichrist. Well, that person's got some explaining to do. If you're going to make the case that Judas, that, that Judas is not or was not an Antichrist, he says, they went out from us. By the way, the same language is used in Acts. They went out from us. They went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that it would be shown that they are not all of us or all are not of us. So here we see Jesus even making the point. Or I'm sorry, John making the point that those that were with us, you can be numbered among us. That means that you are part of us. Maybe most of the people there can't tell, but God can. Certainly he, he can. And so Judas was certainly not because Jesus always made references. As a matter of fact, even when he is speaking about there's one here who's going to betray him. And when Judas asked, is it me? What well, Jesus said, it is as you speak. Yes, it is you. You're the guy. Jesus does not um, alert everyone to his impending betrayal because why? That's what he's there for. So that the scriptures will be fulfilled. And so Judas no one could even make the case that Judas was ever saved. Now, Judas never had the spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8, 9, that however you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Judas never had the spirit in him. Uh, no one could say, as a matter of fact, no one at the time had that, but at least at least through some sort of working by God, the other 11 were cleansed except for the one. And so, guys, it should be painfully obvious, clearly obvious, abundantly clear that Judas was never saved. No one ever thought that he was. As a matter of fact, the scriptures prophesy his coming and what he would do. And what does Jesus call him? a devil. And so it would be kind of hard. And I think it speaks to some people being overly desperate to try to find somebody, an example of someone who was saved, who lost their salvation. There is not one example of a person having the spirit in them, being a believer, and then losing their salvation. Certainly not Judas.